Hey out there, thanks for tuning in. Yesterday I spoke a little bit about, well actually it was about seven minutes long. I spoke a little bit about phase one out of a five phase plan I have for real estate. Phase one, even though it says just do it, if you watch yesterday's video, it's simple, but it's not that easy. It takes about two years, at least two years to get into phase two. And if you watch yesterday's video, which you should have, you can see how excited I am going into phase two. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about phase two. Don't go anywhere. Before I go any further, I just want to let you guys know that it's not like a catch, but this is super important if you're in phase one. I didn't realize it until after I did a house or so, but the maximum loan to value you're going to want to do out of the second R in the Burr technique, we went over that before, that's refinance. The maximum loan to value you're going to want to be at is 70%. It's crucial. It's critical in order to get into phase two. You need to leave 30% equity in the house. That means, let me give you an example. If you buy a house for $100,000 and you go to refinance it, you want to leave at least $30,000 in equity. That would be a 70-30 loan. So I just wanted to make sure I touched base on that before I went any further. So phase two is refinancing, moving money around, and it's gonna start picking up speed a little bit. So I got less than six months in this phase. That's my estimate. So let me tell you a little bit more. How did that, how did that sign get there? Let me move that sign out of the way first. So that's out of the way. Phase two, refinance existing portfolio. Let me, before I go any further, let me just say, portfolio? I got a portfolio? Just maybe three years ago? I don't even know if I knew what a portfolio was. All right, I knew what a portfolio was, but being at this spot, I hope my gratitude comes through. I'm so grateful. I'm gonna give you a real example of what I'm talking about and why this is so exciting. This is an example from the properties that we have. I put down four to five properties because I don't know if I told you, but we took Matawan House off the market and we're gonna rent it. Yes. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to refinance it in the way that I want to right now or I'm gonna to have to go back to that niche lender again. I'm not sure. So that's why I say we have four to five properties with a value of 1.16 million or 1.5, depending on whether or not I could do Matawan. That means cash out Remember, I said 70% maximum loan to value in phase one. Now I'm going for the 10%. I'm going to try to up my loan by 10%. I'm going to raise it from 70% to 80%. I think it's very practical, and I should be able to do it. That's going to give me cash out of at least $100,000 up to $150,000, depending. The reason why that is like exciting is because I'm going to put the money back into the account and go and do this over and over. But in phase two, it gets a little bit easier. Besides getting the cash out, which is exciting in itself, this is exciting too. My current rate on this niche lender is 7%. In today's market, I tell people 7% and they say, what are you crazy? I would never do that. What are you talking about? I could never do that. They go through this whole I don't know, facial gesture, body motion, that I can't even, like, I can't. it's a little scary. He said, I would never do that. I said, well, listen, if you can make money at 7% interest, why wouldn't you do it? Especially if you don't have any money in the property. So I'm going to be getting $100,000 to $150,000 out. The current interest rate, like I just was so dramatic about, is 7% interest. I've been paying quite a bit of interest, and the cash flow was close to zero or just a minimal amount. But again, don't forget, phase one was about acquiring the property, getting it under your control. We talked about leverage, maximum leverage, 7%. My new interest rate's gonna be 3% or less. You think that's gonna generate some cash flow? Heck yeah! The positive cash flow is going to increase by at least $1,500 a month. It could be as much as $2,000 a month. $2,000 a month cash flow. That's $24,000 a year that I'm making while I sleep. Remember that video? One of the things I spoke about yesterday about an obstacle that you might encounter in phase one is you're a newbie. 
you don't have any relationships established with lenders and that's critical getting some relationships with some lenders so like I said when you're backed up against the wall and you have no place else to go like I spoke about that niche lender you got to take whatever you can get and again you got to buy right for that to work when you get into phase two and you have properties I have four to five properties plus I have the other one in Woodbridge and you've done this a few times you start becoming attractive to other lenders especially during phase one you're doing your tax returns that indicate that you know what you're doing now all of a sudden you're in phase two and you're going to get that hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars cash out in the example I gave you but you're also going to have access to more money more lenders are going to want to lend you money hey Harry I see that you've done this over the past three years and we'd like to give you a credit line so that hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars cash could be three, four times that amount, depending on the lenders and and the relationships that you develop. That's why I'm so excited about this. Start speeding up. You got to do some smart investing, and you got to take into consideration your goal now is to build and grow that portfolio. So where before I would go and get the bottom of the barrel, and then there was a, there was a method to my madness. I paid myself during construction. And then there was plenty of equity for me to grab some cash out at the refinance. The downside was the high interest rates, like I said. Now, I might still mix it up with getting some of those bottom of the, bar bottom of the barrel properties in order to generate some immediate income or to give my guys work. However, I'm not going to be limited to just that. I'm going to go into a real life example that I called about today in just one second. I want to maximize my leverage like I've talked about before. I want to get into a property with either zero money or actually I want them to pay me to get into the property. It doesn't always happen like that, but I could be a dreamer. But I can get into the property with zero money out of my pocket using other lenders' money. The combination. I'll get into creative financing in another video. I'm going to have a, uh, a one-year goal. I'm going to go into detail what that means. Where before, my long-range goal was in, in my 60s or so, holding on to these properties as a real estate uh, investment for when I go to retire. Now I'm going to have a goal, just a short-term one-year one goal. I'll go into more detail. I'm going to give you a real example. I called, I called about a house today. I'm going to call it the Sydney house. They have it on the market for $275,000. I spoke to the owner. <laughs> Hello, Joe. It's Harry. I think I like your house. Tell me a little bit about it. Can you tell me why you're moving out of that beautiful town of... We hit it off right off the bat. And he told me, after he was like my friend, he told me, I just want to be honest with you, I'm not taking less than 275. I said, that, that won't be a problem as, as long as some things add up. I already know the house is probably worth 300, so there's about $25,000 of play there. I'll go into detail about that play. I'm going to go over there and see it with Diane on Sunday. I don't think she knows she's going yet, but she's coming over there with me. We're going to go over there and take a look at it. If it works out, let me give you a couple examples of, of what I would like to do. I would like to talk to the seller about seller financing. So what I mean by that is, hey, listen, do you need all your money right now? Or can I give you $30,000 right now? And then in a year, I'll pay off the mortgage. If he did something like that and the, and the terms were favorable, home run. Let me come back to my one-year goal. I already know at this present time and its present condition is worth 300. I can get it for 275. Where's it going to be? Where's it going to be at in one year? Modest improvements. The the paint, the cosmetics and things like that. Is it reasonable to think that it's going to be at 325? Yes. In one year when I went to go in that example, go to pay off the seller, I'm now going to have over $50,000 in equity which it's going to qualify for a conventional loan, a Fannie loan, a Fannie Mae loan. So now I'm going to get even better financing on the property. I'll have a renter in there with, uh, with positive cash flow. I probably would have either borrowed the $30,000 from a different lender or took it out of the bank, but I want to replenish cash into my bank, and now I have another property. And it just keeps on building like that. And now the cash flow becomes even more important. Because if I don't have a whole bunch of equity in the house, I want to at least have a nice chunk of change coming in with cash flow. If I can make three, four, five hundred dollars a month on each piece of property, 
and my goal is pretty lofty, then that means that the passive income that's coming in is going to be so much that I'm going to be able to eventually get to phase five. We're not even close to that yet, but this is phase two in a nutshell.